Okay, let's talk about the MEGA Middle School Math Assessment. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the MEGA Middle School Math Assessment. And uh, obviously that is uh, the assessment that you need to take to become a middle school math teacher in the state of Missouri. So um, what this video is gonna do is uh, we're gonna go over a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty well um, if you're fully prepared for the MEGA middle school math assessment. But we'll get into that in a second. Uh, first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many, many online math courses to actually include an MEGA middle school math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. All my courses are very, very comprehensive because I know what it's like. Uh, to have to study uh, to pass these teacher exams, these certification exams, you know, they um, there's a lot of material on it. And uh, this MEGA, Middle School Math Assessment, it's not just middle school math. I think a lot of times uh, teachers, you know, don't fully realize, you know, at the elementary level or at the middle school level, the amount of math you need to know. So, for example, at the elementary level, you're going to need to know a lot more than just elementary math. And this is uh, irrespective of what state you're in. Okay, but the MEGA middle school math assessment, you're going to have to know a good amount of high school level mathematics to include a lot of advanced uh, concepts of high school level math. And that's that's a lot of math to, to cover. So, um, you know, if you haven't really taken a look at what's on the, the test, the assessment, you know, um, you want to do so. But again, if you're looking for a good way to study for this, um, you know, you could check out my course. Again, the link will be in the description of this course. And uh, real quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I already have hundreds of uh, math videos. If you like my teaching style, that can help you review. And if you get something out of this video, please can, uh, consider smashing that like button. All right, let's get to it. Here is the practice problem. You're like, well, where is the problem? Well, I'm going to explain it. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to show off your math skills and solve it. All right, so here we have some sort of graph of a function. Here is the function. And what I'd like you uh, to determine is what is the domain and range of this function? Okay, what is the domain and range of this function? And try to express this using interval notation. All right, that's this stuff where we use infinity and things like little brackets, open brackets, stuff like that. Okay, so um, if you think you can handle the problem, right, even if you're not quite sure, I would encourage you to pause the video, think about it, right? Again, I want you to uh, figure out what the domain and range are, domain, all right? So I'm telling you this is a function, okay? I want you to uh, tell me or express, the, you know, the best way you can. If you can't do it using this notation, just in your own best way, what is the domain and range of a function? Now, if you don't even remember what those words are, no problem, okay? Don't don't panic, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, the, the whole purpose of this video is not to discourage you, but uh, of course I'm going to um, go over the solution here in a second. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you kind of thought about this, and now let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so um, we're talking about this concept of functions, right? So this is this little function notation, f of x, but you can have all kinds of functions. You can have g of t, h of g. It's this type of notation in mathematics is function notation. There's other types of notation too. You can you can have g dot uh, t like that. That's kind of not as uh, used as much as this type of notation, but you need to know a lot about functions, okay, for sure. And you're probably um, at the middle school level, you very well might be teaching functions, okay. You could be, uh, there's a lot of middle schools where they do algebra one or they teach algebra one in eighth grade, for example, and, you know, that's when you really kind of get heavy duty into uh, functions. So you need to know about functions. You certainly need to know um, a good amount about them and these concepts of well, what a function is, the domain and range, etc. Okay. So if you don't know about it, obviously, this is an area you're going to have to really, um, you know, study. All right. So this is a function. It's function e to the x. It's an exponential function. We have the... The natural base e here, okay, which is a whole nother discussion. That's such a cool number. E is one of those uh, uh, 
constant numbers out there that are just as important as like pi, right? It's extremely important number in mathematics, if you don't know. And it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 2.78, I want to say something, somewhere around there. Just like how pi is approximately 3.14, but even if you didn't know that, um, a couple of things here. I could ask another quick question. I'm, of course, I'm going to answer this question here. What is this point right there? What is that point? Okay. What's the coordinate of this point? All right. So hopefully you're like, hmm, I don't know. Well, let's go to it. This is an exponential function, right? So here, uh, this is zero on x, right? So if I go e to the zero, what is e to the zero equal to? It's one. Anything to the zero power is one. So the coordinate right here is zero, one. So these are some things that you should know, okay? So I don't want to go off on too many different tangents because the question is uh, talks about domain and range, but just some things that if you were, you know, were thinking out loud and you're like, oh yeah, I think that coordinate is zero, one, uh, exponential function, you kind of recognize all this, then that's, uh, that's good. All right, so, <clears throat> but the whole point or the main thing that I really want to focus in on is uh, here, kind of just go here. So we, we were, I'm telling you this is a function, okay? But just another quick thing you should know about functions and then, then I'll get to the answer. So how can I evaluate, how, what, what if the question was, uh, I could have just phrased it this way, okay? Is this a function? Is it a function? And if it is a function, what's the domain and range? So I'm like, ooh, I'm throwing another little question in there, okay? So think about this as a little bonus question. So the answer, obviously, yes, this is a function, and I've given you the graph here of this function. Now, how can I determine or validate that this is a function? Well, there's something you need to know, this vertical line test, right? So don't know if you're familiar with it, but the vertical line test basically uh, states that if I can draw a vertical line, okay, these are, you know, vertical lines, and... When I draw this vertical line anywhere through this graph, it only crosses the graph one time, okay? That is uh, a function. The graph then represents a function. Let's just say it that way. But if I had, let's say I had a uh, uh, an ellipse or something like this, and I drew a vertical line through it, okay? You can see it's chopping through that uh, graph uh, two times, right? Two or more times. So this is not a function this is what we call a relation in mathematics. So functions, functions are a subset of relations. Now, if I'm already, if like I'm going, you know, speaking and about things that you're like, oh, I don't know, you even know what you're talking about, then you got to up your your math game, okay? Uh, not only to get ready for this test, but to get your students ready for high school level mathematics. Okay, really important stuff. But if you're with me so far then that's awesome. Okay. All right. So, and by the way, again, don't get discouraged if you're, if you know, um, just by virtue of you taking this test, you've studied this material before. You just might, you know, you're obviously rusty on this and you got to study because, you know, uh, teachers, you know, you, you sometimes have to take these uh, certification exams more than once. It's quite normal, unfortunately, for, for uh, people to fail certification exams. So don't you know, make sure you fully, you know, respect, you know, what's going to be on this exam. It's not going to be uh, easy. You know, let's just say that much. All right. Uh, okay. Now we can get to our domain and range question. All right. So domain. What is uh, what does this word even mean, right? Domain. Let's just talk about that real quick. The domain is uh, what can we input into the function? What can we input? What are we allowed to input into the function? Okay, so that's kind of the uh, the main idea of what the domain of a function is, right? And I can go and speak to this for a long period of time, but if we look here, the graph is telling us uh, it's going to be x, right? So our x, our x's are going to be associated with the domain, and our y's are going to be associated with the range. Okay, just let's just think about it that way. All right, so um, if I made a little graph here, x and y, okay. And I plugged in, okay, what x is zero, remember this point right here, x was zero, y was one, okay? So this, all these x's that I can plug in to this function, okay, all the set of all those, okay, is the domain. Now, the output values, so if I plugged in a one as an input, all right, like in other words, if I was finding f of zero, 
of e to the x, and I got that equal to 1. This right here, this is the output value, and this is the range. So this is input, this is output, but really the set of all these guys here, the domain, and the set of all these guys here is the range, okay? So things that you, you know you should be understanding. There's a lot of different ways you can, you can model and talk about uh, functions, domain, and range. Super, super, super important uh, concepts in mathematics, okay? So another thing you need to know, you're like, well, this is y. Well, y is the same thing as f of x in, in math notation, okay? All right, so again, the purpose of this video is, not, is just to give you kind of like a pop quiz. I don't want to over-teach, you know, because you know, I'm tempted, right? I, I'm just like, oh, man, if there's a little misunderstanding, I can clear it up now. I'm tempted to teach, but l listen, you, you really need to get yourself studying into a good program, uh, whether it's my course or another course, you know, to really master all this stuff. All right, so... So let's go back to this domain. We'll focus on the domain first. So the domain is all the allowable uh, x values that we can plug into this function. So we could just look to see here, uh, on graphically speaking, that this graph is going to cover, it has associated x values along the entire way. Even though it's exponential and it's going up this way, this thing is still going to, you know, keep rising and rising to the rising to the right. So if you just look to see, this graph is going to span the entire width of the x-axis, all right? So uh, a couple different ways we can express that. The entire x-axis, all the x's along the x-axis are going to be, or, um, be allowable input values into this function, all right? So a couple different ways we can express this, right? We can say the entire set of real numbers, right? That's an appropriate way. But I did ask you to put this in interval notation. So you would want to go negative infinity to positive infinity, like so, okay? That means this is negative infinity, it's going forever. This is positive infinity, and that is going forever in this direction, in this direction, okay? Or the set of all real numbers. But, you know, this is just, again, another little, you know, added on question to see if you uh, are familiar with uh, what we call interval notation. All right, so now let's answer this uh, question about the range, and we'll wrap up this video. So the range is the associated uh, output values, and now we're going to kind of look at this graph, and now we're going to look at it uh, with respect to the y-axis. So if you look here, you know, uh, this, let me uh, fix my little highlighter. This uh, graph is kind of covering the y-axis above, above zero, okay? It's only like from here up it's going we don't have anything going on down right here all right so it looks like the associated um, values here okay are going to be well y is greater than zero okay so y is greater than zero so here's zero right here's one two three four or well, this is one actually one two three four etc so all y is greater than zero would be a, a, a way of uh, stating the range. Now, would it be all y is greater than zero or y, y is greater than or equal to zero? All right, so another little pop qu uh, question here. All right, so um, the behavior of this exponential function along this graph is what we call asymptotic, right? In other words, uh, the x-axis is an, acting as an asymptote to this function. Now, if you don't know what that word means, again, you know, uh, just another feedback that you need to do some more studying. Essentially what that just means, it's a fancy word saying that this function is going to approach, get closer and closer and closer, infinitely close to the x-axis, but it's never going to cross, right? So, you know, uh, if you had a graphing calculator, it looks like it touches, but it doesn't. It just gets, you know, if you got a little magnifying glass there, you'd still see that function super close, but it's never going to cross, right? So it's not going to be why... Uh, greater than or equal to, it never touches. Maybe theoretically when it reaches negative infinity, it touches, but it's going to be y is greater than zero. So how do we express that using interval notation? Well, we would use the open bracket, okay, zero, and then positive infinity like so, right? Uh, and I don't want to turn this lesson into interval notation, but that's something that you uh, need to understand. Okay, so there you go. There is a function... We uh, talked about a lot of different things 
you know, in this uh, video. I just couldn't help myself. But uh, hopefully, you know, this was, you know, hopefully you got this right. And you're like, yeah, you understood everything I was talking about. So that's excellent. You know, so we, you know, you did get this right. But no means is that a full indication, right, of that you're fully prepared for the MEGA middle school math assessment. There's a lot of different topics on there. You know, trigonometry, geometry, you know, some probabilities, statistics. There's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So, again, you know, this is just a uh, one little tiny problem and a whole set of things that you need to know. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, if you want to check out my MEGA uh, middle school math prep course, you'll find that link uh, to that in the description of this video. Um, please consider subscribing. I love when people do subscribe. I'm posting con constantly on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for a good 12 plus years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos. I just, you know, I love teaching math, love helping people out. So hopefully you'll become a subscriber. If you like the video, please consider smashing that like button and leave me some feedback. What's your situation? Are you um, coming from high school to college to uh, going into teaching? Or are you, you know, coming from one career into another, you know, career? You know, maybe you're an engineer, you know, for 10 years, or maybe you worked in business for or 20 years and now you want to become a school teacher. That's excellent uh, as well. So it's all kinds of different paths that people take to become a teacher. Be interested in uh, knowing that or any feedback, you know, uh, why, why are you teaching middle school math versus high school math, et cetera. So any good, any feedback is good feedback. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this particular MEGA uh, assessment. And, uh, you know, we definitely need, you know, great teachers. I'm sure the state of Missouri, like all states, you know, are desperate for outstanding teachers. And I'm sure you are one in the making. All right. So with that being said, I uh, definitely wish you all the best on this exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.